Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. There's some good news coming out of the G7. At the end of Mark Carney's statement in the G7 document that was issued just before the event, the last line was that we wanted to have a Canada that was strong and free. So that sounds great, and there's great news out of the G7 summit in Kananaskis, and that is that a Canadian company called Cohere has a memorandum of understanding with the UK and a reverse memorandum of understanding from the UK to Canada in terms of developing AI for Canadians. And it's great news, but it does come with a price tag. And I just want to read from some notes I have here that in March of 2025, Cohere was granted $240 million by the Canadian government. This grant is to go up to April 30th of 2049. And the purpose is to scale up, expand artificial intelligence, AI, and attract investment for a data center provider. So I guess that follows along with Mr. Carney's perspective on investing to activate market forces. And it remains to be seen if that's what will happen. It seems that Cohere all by itself had successfully attained a lot of market capital. So um, I'm not too sure how and why this large $240 million grant will change things, except for this issue of the data center provider. Now, it's problematic that we have a net zero obsessed prime minister and a net zero obsessed Canada and government because there's a really bad convergence of competing things happening that most people are not aware of. Um, and just reading from a few notes here, first of all, we have the clean electricity regulations that are supposed to be enforced by 2035, which is less than a decade away. We have the EV mandates kicking in, and the EV mandates would require us to build probably about the equivalent electrical generation capacity of somewhere between 8 to 16 site C dams in BC, which is only now becoming operational. At a, and it was at a cost of about $16 billion. Now these kinds of projects take easily 20 to 30 years to build. And so that's going to be way past the 2035 date. We've got a 2019 analysis on our blog by engineer Kent Zare. And he shows that we would need eight Site C dams, but it turns out that Site C's capacity will be much less than stated, probably due to uh, low winter reserves. So, you know, you can't run all that water out in the winter because you have to wait for a spring to replenish your reservoir. And also we have heat pumps. All of the environmental groups in Canada are advocating for heat pumps in every home rather than natural gas heating. In fact, in Quebec, a lot of the home heating has gone to electrical, but that means that they've really tapped out Quebec Hydro's ability to serve other industries. Quebec Hydro has a lot of big contracts with the eastern seaboard of the United States, so they can't just back off on those. And we also have tapped out BC Hydro. They've been in a drought for the past three years. In fact, they've been in drought for the eight of the past 14 years. So who have they been calling on for power? They've been calling on the United States of America. <laughs> and what's the problem with that? Well, Schneider Electric just issued a summary report of a more complex report out of the United States, which evaluates the upcoming reliability of the grid in the United States. And the news is not good. A lot of the areas of the country are below reserve capacity, meaning that if there is a sudden event like, I don't know, a lightning storm or a big windstorm and a lot of power generation or power goes down, then there's just not the reserve capacity to serve that area. And if you add onto all of this declining capacity and capability of the power grid, if you add onto that artificial intelligence, you know, 
that is a huge consumer of electricity. Where is that power generation going to come from? Of course, some AI facilities in the United States are building their own private natural gas power generation plants on site. So they're not connected to the grid. They're operating independently. Um, but in Canada, you know, natural gas is almost verboten. If we look at the problems between Alberta and uh, former en environment minister Stephen Gilbo, he demanded that natural gas plants in Alberta only run 18 days a year. Well, that's not economical. No one's going to build a gas plant for that. But if you have AI and you need that power capacity, really the only thing you can rely on for reliable power in quantity would be nuclear. And that's only in Ontario. So, you know, we have a very serious problem in terms of applying too many ideological issues to our power grid and yet not allowing realistic and practical solutions to be built. And what that probably will mean is that you as a consumer will be rationed. And in fact, that's one of the things they want to do with AI is they want to be able to give you a personal carbon ration and track it and ration you on your Vax port, on your phone, in your digital wallet, on your MasterCard Black, Do Black MasterCard, so that you can't buy more things than your carbon ration allows, unless you buy carbon credits. So there's a real wacky future ahead of us, and I don't think all these different competing electricity partners are talking with each other. So I expect there will be serious problems in terms of provision of power. But, you know, now we can claim to be an AI leader perhaps in the world. And there's some kind of deal going on in the G7 between Canada and the UK on AI. And looks like you're funding it. That's my take on it. You might see it in another way. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Mm -hmm.